Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm in this beautiful theatre in South London. Look at that for a backdrop. Um, recently, I was at the ASAP Paranormal Conference as one of the speakers. I was the last speaker on the Friday afternoon. Incredible event. Some really, really good talks uh, on that day. Really good talks. Uh, here's a little bit of an extended uh, footage of my talk at the conference. It was all about asking why asking questions that I don't hear other people asking. Um, for example, I don't think anywhere is haunted. I think it's everywhere. Uh, but these are a few highlights from that talk at the ASAP conference on Sunday, the 4th of September. I have gone home by now, so I'm glad to see you all still here. Um, yeah, hi. can you hear me all right? Yeah. 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 I'm a bit of an actor, so I, I'm, I'm projecting at the same time. I don't know if this is actually... Yeah, I can hear this all right. Uh, so, my name is Mark English. Um, I'm a YouTuber. Not a great successful YouTuber or anything. Uh, I've been investigating the paranormal since about 1991, when we started off doing crop circles in Wiltshire, and got into sort of this ghost and spirit side around 2000, 2001. What I'm going to talk about, I'm going to start off with a little of a ghost story. Uh, it's an eyewitness account told me by my, one of my best friends, a uh, lady called Mandy, who was part of our old spiral paranormal team, which we operated from about 2006 to around 2018. Now, my friend Mandy is a raw psychic. That's a term I've coined for people who aren't professional mediums. They're, they've had this ability since they were kids. Um, and they literally just come out, walking along the street, and think they'll come out with stuff. And they think, oh, and you can always say that they've seen something or felt something, so they'll have a little bit of a moment. Now, Mandy used to work as a preschool manager in this old Victorian building near Epsom. Um, and this is a story from three years ago, from November 2019. We've got it right here. So, preschool, it's nine o'clock in the morning. As her and her colleague are standing by a door and letting all the young kids in, okay, parents are outside letting all the young kids in. So she's told me this story about four or five times. I hope I've got the details completely correct here. So to say that door there is where all the kids are coming in. There's a corridor where you guys are sitting now. As all the kids are coming in, she suddenly saw, she's standing with her colleague as well, suddenly saw this figure walk along towards her in a tweed jacket, she said, look wearing an Edwardian, turn to the left and walk through a brick wall. The first thing she did after being freaked out, after all the kids coming in, she immediately said to her colleague, not what did you just see, she said, describe what you just saw, just in case. And she saw exactly the same thing. So you've got two people seeing the same thing at the same time. So at 12 o'clock midday, they're letting the kids out, because they're only there for like three hours a day. They let the kids out again. They're standing by the door, obviously it's still playing on their mind. Again, seeing the same chat, come along, turn left, and walk through a door. She has no, even though she's a royal psychic, she's there as a manager. She's not tuning in or anything like that. She's actually there doing a job. But it totally freaked them out, and a couple of occasions after that, there's been sightings in this building. Now, what I'm gonna say is now, what did they see? Okay, she saw an apparition, and we all pretty much know what an apparition is. Either an apparition, would you all agree, an apparition is probably a recording of some past or future event. Now, if you did see an apparition, that's not really necessarily proof of the afterlife. It's a recording. But also, if it's a recording, I think CJ said something like this earlier on, which I, I totally agree with. No, does that apparition have mass? Because it needs photons of light for you to be able to see that apparition ahead of you. So it's the, same, it's the same as why if you're talking with spirit, that's totally different and probably a little much rarer. You know, do you, has anyone ever had any reports of actually contacting spirit and actually seeing them at the same time? Yes. Yeah? That's very interesting, very interesting. I mean, do you see people with psychic ability or are you just very, very lucky? But actually having a good communication with spirit, that's what it's all about. That's where you're gathering the information of what they are. I've never seen an apparition in my life. I'd love to, I'm sure. I would totally fully freak out if I did. That's the whole point. We all get spooked. We try and be serious investigators, but we all get spooked at times because we're human beings. If it's a good psychic with you, and we've worked with, you know, I've worked with Nori for about 2007, who's a very good psychic, she didn't want me to shout out, but we've worked with some very good psychics, haven't we? Uh, Alan and people like that, who are very, what I call, I say, raw psychics. They're not trained, they don't, they don't go to spiritual school or anything, they're not professional mediums. Um, I've got no problem with professional mediums at all, you know. Um, I sometimes think that if you're a professional medium, not in every case, you have an agenda, you need to deliver the goods. If you're a royal psychic, you don't. If you've seen something, it happens, if you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, 
And also with apparitions, going back to apparitions, why is it we only see a certain kind of apparition? Usually something within the last thousand years, dressed like something in the last mm. thousand years. You don't, I mean, many people say this, you don't see ghosts of cavemen. You don't see ghosts, very rare you see Roman. I think maybe the energy dissipates over time, like the uh, jet fuel in the sky. Maybe after a thousand years, it just goes, you know. It's not spirit, it's just an apparition. So like anything, uh, you turn the switch, a uh, light bulb on, and eventually that light bulb's going to go out. And also, one thing, I, this, this might then, I don't know who Carl Pilkington is. Yeah. 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 Very funny Carl Pilkington. And he once said to Ricky Gervais on their podcast, it's actually a very valid question, why we don't see Chinese ghosts? Why don't we see ghosts of colour? You know, it all seems to be sort of a white Edwardian, Victorian, Tudor, you know. Mm. Why, is it? why can't we see more modern ghosts, as well as communicating with them? So yeah, I mean, when we used to do investigations, we, we used to go on investigation and try and have the right intent. I've been on a few public ghost hunts. Um, oh, I'm afraid I don't actually really like ghost hunts, but parallel investigations with uh, groups, with other people who you don't know. And I think it's important to go in with an investigation with the right intent. What do you want to do? Do you want to see an apparition or do you want to communicate the spirit? What are you up to? What do you actually need to get out of the investigation? Um, I think that's really important to have the right intent. And going with a lot of respect as well, whether you're a believer or not, or a sceptic. I like to think that an open-minded sceptic. Um, I think you still need to go in with the right in intent and the right love as well. Um, I know it sounds like I'm an old hippie, but I am an old hippie, so excuse me. Um, so yeah, go, go in with, the, with the right intent. Now, I, I'm very fortunate. I work in a 112-year-old theatre in South London. I've been there 18 years. It's a beautiful building. I probably only have one paranormal experience there. Here's a very... Here's the, all right, I'm just come out with it. We're in a paranormal conference. I don't think anywhere is haunted. Up, I'm going to upset anyone here. I don't think anywhere is haunted. But I can't... It's all right, I've got, I can come back. I think it's everywhere. I think it's absolutely everywhere. I don't think you need to go into a 400-year-old uh, Tudor building to, to find it. What, what's around here at the moment? Oh, my goodness. I just realised it's mm -hmm. staring in the background. Um, I don't think you need to go into a 400-year-old building to seek out spirit. I mean, some of you who might be psychic here, you might have sent some stuff in this auditorium. Yeah, yeah. You know, so what's in here? What's on the, what's on the site beforehand? I would say that there's no difference between going into maybe a lovely, let's think of a lovely location, one of my favourite, Mitchell and Priory, down in East Sussex, beautiful, beautiful building, and going into your local Sainsbury's and doing the investigation. I don't think there should be absolutely any different. Um, you might disagree with that. Um, obviously, you've got, you know, the atmosphere's got to be right. You probably can't, don't want to go and do an investigation when everyone's out shopping and all that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I don't think, and also, I still, been saying for years, I've never quite understood why we do it in the dark. And investigate the bar. What difference does it make at 10 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock in the morning? Um, you know? Mark, I've only ever seen one ghost that I've seen at night. All the rest of them have all been in the daytime. They've all been in the daytime. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, I think most sightings, I'll just say, are in the daytime. You know? Um, I don't understand why we do it in the dark. It does, I mean, don't get me wrong, parallel investigations with a group of people, it is great fun. It is great fun. But it's very much limited in what you can do. I mean, I've been on many ghost hunts, especially with Liz Nori and with other groups. And where I'm, we're all getting something going, it's, you know, we might be doing a bit of glass work or something, you know. That's really happening, oh, we're getting a bit of communication here, we've got maybe have a very good psychic with us, okay, oh, it's great. And then you get over the radio, <laughs> okay, we're moving on to the next location, the next location. Totally breaks, totally breaks down. And you want to stay there and do a little bit more, but you can't, you've got to move on. So it's sort of, they've got their limitations. And you've only got that period from like, you know, eight o'clock in the evening till about two o'clock in the morning. That's why I don't really do them anymore. Um, especially when you're doing, I think it's important to do investigations with people you know and people you trust. Because I think it's very, very important, you know. Um, so yeah, as I said, I don't think anything, what uh, the Reverend was saying, I think that's a very good point you said. You, you really made me think of, on, on your talk as well. We've had some really good talks today. Wouldn't it be great if we could investigate something like a church during a service? But yeah. I, I don't think, as you say, I don't think that, that could happen, you know. Because you know, religion doesn't really require proof, or we do on, on our side. But that would be imagine the energy going through. Everyone's there praising God, praising God. You know, they've got a clear intention and an elevated emotion. Um, and I think they're going out into the ether. I don't know if anyone follows Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, I don't know who it is. Yeah, and he, I like it. The unified field theory. I love the unified field field theory. That all our consciousness is going out into the into the ether. That anything could be surrounding us. Anything could be going on here. Um, 
Going back to though, it is nice to work in, in the theatre. It is really nice to work in, in the theatre. We're a very, I mean, we're a very active theatre. Again, I don't think we're really any more active than going out into the street. You know, I work in Wimbledon, it's a very old town, it's been there for 2,000 years um, of occupation. There's been Roman villas, we're not, actually, there's an old Roman villa that was excav excavated literally just at the corner of where our building is. Um, I've had a few experiences in there. Uh, I'm going to tell you another great, great tale fact, and I got a call about five years ago uh, from a lady who comes to see a show the day before. And she's sitting in the auditorium, she was the carer to her sister who was in a wheelchair. So we take the chair, like here, we would take the chairs out and we put wheelchairs in for the customers. And the sister is sitting at the end of the row. So if there's any emergencies, we can, we can get her out quickly. Um, she's sitting there, and as the lights are going down, full auditorium, full auditorium, as Meryl Knight's her care, the sister carer is relating this story to me because the actual sister wouldn't talk to me about it. She was so freaked out. But as she, the lights are going down on the show, she literally, I'm sorry, she was literally there, and she saw a tall figure of, she had about six foot four, wide brimmed hat, black coat, black uh, trousers, boots, like, looking like a Puritan, little goatee beard, and literally just staring at her like that, and then faded out as the show started. This is a full auditorium. I, mean, I bought in um, two psychics once, or one 10 years ago, when it was the theatre's centenary um, uh, uh, celebrations, and we had a big ghost. I do the ghost walks there and all that kind of thing. And here's coming out some really interesting stuff. We talk about, um, that black masses we were talking about earlier on. Was that you, CJ, mentioning that, about black, black masses? Uh, no. You, thank you, yes. And that's very interesting. Uh, where our theatre is on stage right, on the, in the auditorium, people have constantly seen this, like a cloud, black cloud goes down the auditorium. Uh, ushers have seen it over the years. Um, and when I brought in this, uh, my friend Alan, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, uh, who's a very, very strong psychic, uh, and he picked up on that. He said, there's something going down this corridor and I can't work it out. Mandy again, the raw psychic I was talking about. I brought her in, coming in once again with the right, hopefully the right intent. But she also said there's something going down that corridor. It's, it's a black mass and other people see it as well. So I thought, okay, other people see it as well. So what that is, we don't know. Nothing malevolent, nothing malevolent, but it's just weird. So I'm with all, if I ever go in the auditorium, I'm always looking over at that, that point. Customers have seen it as well. So yeah, what is, what is the future? Um, how can we? get new information, new ways of doing things. I mean, I mean, we all love going out in paranormal investigations, I'm sure we've all been on them. Uh, they're great fun. Um, I always think, as I said earlier, I think you should go out and be respectful, uh, always, whether you're a skeptic, a believer, or not even a believer. I've taken people who I do not believe in it at all out on investigations, and uh, they're still being respectful, just in case. We all believe, of course, you know. Even though I'm an open-minded skeptic, I'm, I am a believer. Um, so yeah, I did think we, knew there's a, we need a new way of doing things. I'd love to bring the science in more on it, but how, how do you measure it in a laboratory? How do you do it? You know, we have EVP recordings, but even that's debatable. You know, even in this day and age with very, very clear recordings, and uh, if you see sort of any ghost pictures, it's always blurred. In this day of 4K, 8K technology, I find that it's extraordinary. Um, so I'd like to see a new way of collaborating all that kind of information uh, in a more central base kind of thing. Um, I'd love to be a part of that. Or people are getting interested in the paranormal. Um, I've got, I get very rarely do I hear anyone come and saying, I don't believe any of it. And I say to them, well, what don't you believe? You don't believe in UFOs, you don't believe in ghosts, don't believe in, you know, this paranormal covers such a wide area. Um, you can't just say you don't believe in the paranormal. This is all matter, this is not everything, is it? Our vision, we only see, now I hope I get this right, 0.000.35% of the infrared spectrum. Okay, that's nothing, that's almost less than 1%. What is really going on all around us as we're sitting here in this auditorium on a Sunday afternoon? What else is going around? You know. Um, I'll keep it short, because I say everyone's quite tired probably, sick of people me yabbing on, but thank you very much for indulging me. And uh, I hope we will have a safe journey. I'm on the go. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. I was a bit nervous on the day, because um, especially it was right at the end of the day. But uh, everyone was very kind, very kind. Hope you enjoyed that video. Please do the old like, subscribe, all the normal stuff, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.